Hey everyone, it's Triple L and now, let's talk about Pokemon. So I was sitting around and I started thinking about the logic behind Pokemon type advantages and Pokemon type weaknesses and then I just started thinking about the poison type and the psychic type and then thinking about how psychic does a lot of damage to poison. And I started wondering like, what is the logic behind this particular typing? Like why does a strong mind hit a snake harder than you would think it would? And you know, then I started thinking about Eastern medicine and other kind of Eastern esoteric concepts. So, you know, like the idea that your mind can overcome the toxins in your body and heal you. you know, I was thinking like, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, if you go along those lines, yeah, that makes sense. But then when you look at Pokemon type advantages in the chart, you realize that the psychic type takes normal damage from poison. So really, having a strong mind doesn't necessarily save you from poison. I mean, you just take it the same way that a fire type would take it. So then I changed my approach and just looked at the fact, okay, psychic does more damage to poison types. And then I started wondering, well, well, why? Why, why is that a thing? Why? What's so special about the poison type that psychic can hurt more? That was my line of thought. Now let's logic it out. I started my ill-prepared and under-researched investigation by looking at the other type, the psychic hits hard, the fighting type. Why is fighting weak to psychic? Well, pretty simple, fighting type is all about muscles, so we can assume they sacrifice brain power, their minds are weak. If there was an intelligence stat in Pokemon, the fighting types are probably close to zero. So first possibility, psychic attacks hit weaker minds harder. Grimer, pile of animated sludge, I wouldn't expect complex thought out of that thing. Garbodor, its brain is trash, literally. It doesn't even have the cognitive ability to be aware of how ugly it is. Weezing, oh man, that thing looks like it's in mental anguish. It must only know suffering. It can't, it doesn't have any brain power to spend on anything else. So, weak minds get hit harder? I think that's reasonable. Poison types have members that have weak minds due to toxins that are their bodies? I think that's reasonable. But when you look at it, it doesn't apply to all of them, especially if you consider Pokemon like Ekans, Stunky, or Tentacruel. These organisms just don't seem to fit the idea of weak-minded. Which means another explanation is needed to account for these. So I went with my next idea. Can an organism poison itself? Poison types have concoctions of deadly chemicals in their body. What if those chemicals go where they shouldn't go? Psychics, on the other hand, have telekinesis and just generally moving stuff at a distance. They can move stuff that shouldn't move, rupture things that shouldn't be ruptured. That was my line of thought. So maybe the poison type beat hit harder when its volatile insides are being hit in a way they shouldn't be hit. Wouldn't that hurt the poison type even if the poison type could probably sort it out? So I looked at three real life examples for proof and concept. First thing I looked at, snakes. Can a snake poison itself if it bites itself? It wasn't the best start. Short answer, not really. Snakes have low levels of exposure and because of that they have antibodies. Can't kill itself with its own poison, but another snake's toxin could potentially kill it. That one wasn't conclusive enough. Next organism I looked at, jellyfish. Can a jellyfish poison itself? Interestingly, jellyfish have a system specifically to prevent the release of toxins into members of its own species. They can't sting their own, but they can still kill other jellyfish species. Of course, I couldn't find anything about jellyfish interacting with their own poison. So dead end there. But if they have a system specifically to prevent toxin release, that might be indicative of something. Last organism I looked at, human. And there we hit the jackpot. Humans have enzymes that if they pop out of where they're supposed to be, it's destruction. One example are enzymes in the pancreas. Those things cannot leave the pancreas. So there I got proof of concept, I found it. Then I rationalized it back to Pokemon. Psychic hits a poison type. Toxic chemicals get released. Poison types might have antibodies. Their systems might have mechanisms to protect them, but damage might still occur before the body can regain control of the volatile release of substance into the rest of the body. And thus we can rationalize that's what super effective damage from a psychic to a poison is when it doesn't account for the weakness of the mind. Of course, some Pokemon still slip by, like Gengar. I wouldn't want to call Gengar stupid. Secondly, it's a ghost. It doesn't really have a body to contaminate with poison. But for that one, what if psychic attacks just pretty much puncture a hole in the thing and release the gas that makes up the Pokemon? 
possible. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of the video, guys. Um, one thing to say is that in the video to justify the logic of why the poison type was hit harder by psychic, you know, we had to unify the different approaches from the different animal kingdoms. And you might be thinking that's a bit too much. That's not really fair. But, you know, if you consider Pokemon, the poison type unifies a bunch of different animal kingdoms under the banner of the poison type. You have the reptiles, you have the fish, you have the mammal type Pokemon all coming together. So because that's unifying it, I figured we could unify the mechanisms for the different animal kingdoms to try and make sense of it. But at the end of the day, it's a fictional work. And this video is just for fun to try and give you guys some kind of background to understand where the general idea might have come from when it came to the psychic versus poison. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for me. Thanks for watching the video. And if you like the video, uh, subscribe if you want. It really helps out the channel. And uh, yeah, cool. If you guys have any suggestions for videos that you'd like to see in the future, leave it down below. And until next time, I hope you have a great day.